Robert I was born on the 11th of July, 1274. He became known later as Robert the Bruce, a descendant from Anglo-Norman and Gaelic nobilities. His parental fourth great-grandfather was David I. Robert's grandfather, Robert de Bruce, 5th Lord of Annandale, was one of the claimants to the Scottish throne during the Great Cause. Very little is known of his youth. He was probably brought up in a mixture of the Anglo-Norman culture of Northern England and Southeastern Scotland. Robert the Bruce would most probably have become trilingual at an early age. He would have spoken both the Anglo-Norman language of his Scots-Norman peers and his father's family and the Gaelic language of his Carrick birthplace and his mother's family. Robert had nine siblings and he and his brother Edward may have been fostered according to Gaelic tradition, spending a substantial part of their youth at the courts of other noblemen. As heir, Robert would have been schooled by tutors in all the requirements of courtly etiquette. This grandfather, known to contemporaries as Robert the Noble and to history as Bruce the Competitor, seems to have been immensely influential on the future king. Robert's first appearance in history is on a witness list for the charter issued by Alexander Ock MacDonald, Lord of Isley. It was around 1290 that Robert would have been knighted and he began to appear on the political stage in the Bruce dynastic interest. Then Robert's mother died early in 1292. In November of the same year, Edward I of England, on behalf of the Guardians of Scotland and, the, and following the Great Cause, awarded the vacant crown of Scotland to his grandfather's first cousin once removed, John Boyol. Even after John's accession, Edward still continued to assert his authority over Scotland and relations between the two kings soon began to deteriorate. The Bruce's sided with King Edward against King John and his common allies. Against the objections of the Scots, Edward I agreed to hear appeals on cases ruled on the court of the guardians that had governed Scotland during the interim. At some point in early 1296, Robert married his first wife, Isabella of Mar, the daughter of Dumnall I, Earl of Mar. As Earl of Carrick, Robert the Bruce supported his family's claim to the throne and took part in William Wallace's revolt against Edward I of England. At the Battle of Dunbar, Scottish resistance was effectively crushed. Edward deposed King John, placed him in the Tower of London, and installed Englishmen to govern the country. The campaign had been very successful, but the English triumph would only be temporary. When the Scottish revolt against Edward I broke out in July of 1297, James Stuart, 5th High Steward of Scotland, led into rebellion a group of Scots, including the young Robert Bruce. The future king was now 22, and in joining the rebels, he seemed to have been acting independently of his father, who took no part in the rebellion. With the outbreak of the revolt, Robert left Carl's Isle and made his way to Annandale, where he called together the knights of his ancestral land and, according to English Chronicle, Walter of Garsburg, addressed them thus, No man holds his own flesh and blood in hatred, and I am no exception. I must join my own people and the nation in which I was born. I ask that you please come with me, and you will be my counselors and close comrades. On the 7th of July, 1297, Bruce and his friends made terms with Edward I by a treaty called the Capulation of Irvine. The Scottish lords were not to serve beyond the sea against their will, and were pardoned for their recent violence in return for swearing allegiance to King Edward. The Bishop of Glasgow, James the Stuart, and Sir Alexander Lindsay became sureties for Bruce until he delivered his infant daughter, Majori, as a hostage, which he never did. When King Edward returned to England after his victory at the Battle of Falkirk, the Bruce's possessions were accepted from the lordship and lands that Edward assigned to his followers. In 1298, Bruce became a guardian of Scotland, alongside his rivals for the Scottish throne. John Common and William Limbarton. Bruce resigned as a guardian by the year 1300, due in part to his quarrels with John Common, but chiefly because the restoration of King John seemed imminent. In 1302, he submitted to Edward I and returned to the King's peace. Also in 1302, Bruce married his second wife, Elizabeth de Burgh, 
the daughter of Richard de Burr, second Earl of Ulster. By Elizabeth, he had four children, David II, John, who died in childhood, Matilda, and Margaret. In 1303, Edward Longshanks invaded Scotland yet again, this time reaching Edinburgh before marching to Perth. Edward stayed in Perth until July, with the country now under submission. All the leading Scots except for William Wallace surrendered to Edward in February of 1304. John Common, who was by now guardian, submitted to Edward. The laws and liberties of Scotland were to be as they had been in the days of Alexander III, and any that needed alteration would be with the assent of King Edward and the advance of the Scots nobles. Bruce's father also died that year, giving Robert inheritance to his family's claim to the throne. On the 11th of June, 1304, Bruce and William Lambarton made a pact that bound them each to the other, in friendship and alliance against all men. If one should break the secret pact, he would forfeit to the other the sum of £10,000. While all this took place, William Wallace was finally captured near Glasgow, and he was hung, drawn, and quartered in London on the 23rd of August, 1305. In September of 1305, Edward ordered Robert the Bruce to put his castle at Kildrumming in the keeping of such a man as himself will be willing to answer for, suggesting that King Edward Longshanks suspected Robert was not entirely trustworthy and may have been plotting behind his back. In February of 1306, following an argument during a meeting at Greyfriars Monastery, Dumfries, Bruce killed John Common. Bruce then asserted his claim to the Scottish crown and began his campaign by force for the independence of Scotland. He was excommunicated by the Pope shortly after. Bruce still moved quickly to seize the throne and was crowned king of the Scots on the 25th of March, 1306, at Scone. Edward Longshanks forces defeated Robert in battle, and King Robert the Bruce was forced to flee into hiding in the Hebrides and Ireland, before returning in 1307 to defeat the English army at Loudoun Hill and wage a highly successful guerrilla war against the English. Bruce's queen, Elizabeth, daughter Marjorie, his sisters Christina and Mary, and Isabella Macduff were captured in the sanctuary at Tain and sent to harsh imprisonment, which included Mary and Isabella being hung in cages at Roxburgh and Berwick Castle, respectively, for about four years, while Bruce's brother, Neil, was executed by being hung, drawn, and quartered. On the 7th of July, King Edward I had died, leaving Bruce opposed by the king's son, Edward II. It is still uncertain where Bruce spent the winter of 1306 to 1307. Ireland has a serious possibility in Orkney under Norwegian rule at the time, or Norway proper, although these are unlikely. Bruce and his followers returned to the Scotland mainland in February in two groups. One led by Bruce and his brother Edward Bruce landed at Turnberry Castle and began a guerrilla war in southwest Scotland. The other led by his brothers Thomas and Alexander landed slightly further south at Loch Ryan, but they were soon captured and executed. In April, Bruce won a small victory over the English at the Battle of Glan Pruel. In 1309, Bruce held his first parliament at St. Andrews, and by August he controlled all of Scotland north of the River Tay. At the Battle of Bonnockburn, in June 1314, Bruce defeated a much larger English army under Edward II, confirming the re-establishment of an independent Scottish monarchy. The battle marked a significant turning point, and free from English threats, Scotland's main armies could now invade northern England. Bruce launched devastating raids into Lancashire and Yorkshire. He also decided to expand the war against the English and create a second front by sending an army under his younger brother Edward to invade Ireland, appealing to the native Irish to rise against Edward II's rule. In the spring of 1314, Edward Bruce laid siege to Stirling Castle, whose governor agreed to capitulate if not relieved before the 24th of June 1314. In May, Bruce again raided England and subdued the Isle of Man. Bruce's forces invaded Ireland in 1315. Bruce's forces invaded Ireland in 1315 in order to free the country from English rule and to open a second front in the continual wars with England. The Irish even crowned Edward Bruce as High King of Ireland in 1316, despite Bonnockburn and the capture of the final English strongholds at Berwick in 1318. Edward II refused to give up his claim to the overlordship of Scotland. In 1320, the Scottish magnates and nobles submitted 
the declaration of Abroth to Pope John the Twenty Second, declaring Bruce as their rightful monarch and asserting Scotland's status as an independent kingdom. And in 1326, the Franco-Scottish alliance was renewed in the Treaty of Corbeil. In 1327, the English disposed Edward II in favor of his son Edward III, and peace was temporarily concluded between Scotland and England with the Treaty of Edinburgh Northampton, by which Edward III renounced all claims to sovereignty over Scotland. Robert had been suffering from a serious illness from at least 1327. It had been proposed that he may have suffered from tuberculosis, syphilis, motor neuron disease, or a series of strokes. In October 1328, the Pope finally lifted the interdict of Scotland and the excommunication of Robert I. The king's last journey appears to have been a pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Ninian at Withorn. This was possibly in search of a miraculous cure or to make his peace with God. At the end of March 1329, he was staying at Glenless Abbey and at Montheris, from where St. Ninan's Cave was visited. Robert de Bruce died on the 7th of June 1329 at the manor of Cardross near Dumberton. He died utterly fulfilled in that the goal of his lifelong struggle had been realized and confident that he was leaving the kingdom of Scotland's safety in the hands of its most trusted lieutenant, Murray, six days after his death, to complete his triumph still further, papal bulls were issued granting the privilege of unction at the coronation of future kings of Scotland. The king's body was embalmed and his sternum was sawn to allow extraction of the heart in accordance with Bruce's own written request. The heart was buried at Melrose Abbey in Roxburghshire. His body was buried at 